All right, welcome back. In this video, I want to introduce how to basically use the method of the variation of parameters. Um, I'm not going to derive it because it's really boring. Um, there's there's a million derivations and proofs of this thing on the internet. If you really need to find it, you can just Google variation of parameters proof. Um, they're all the same, and and it's not really going. Knowing how it's derived isn't going to help you on the test when you're just asked how to use it, or you're just presented a second order differential equation and you're asked to find a particular solution to it. Um, it's more important, I think, for you um, to know that this tool is available to you or this method is available to you and that you can just bust it out and use it um, and and then move on with your life, basically. Uh, so uh, basically, we can use it to find a particular solution to a second order differential equation. And to do that, we're just going to basically fill out this expression here. So there's just a few things in the equation here that we need to get. Um, you're going to see we have y1, we have y2, uh, we need, well, we'd we'll be given g of t, and then we also have w of y1 and 2. So y1 and 2 are just parts of the complementary solution to the original differential equation. And you can find that by converting the original differential equation into a homogeneous one, basically by setting g of t equal to zero, and then finding the characteristic equation and solving for the roots, basically we're going to get r1 and r2. And depending on whether the roots are real and distinct or real and repeated or complex, you'll be able to write the general solution to the homogeneous version um, so let's say they were real and distinct. We would have yc of t. So yc of t is the complementary solution to the original differential equation, but it's also the general solution to the homogeneous version. Um, and when these, if these were real and distinct, the form would be basically just c1e to the rt, uh, r1t, plus c2e to the r2t. Now if these were real and repeated or complex, the form would be a little bit different and we've gone over that in previous videos earlier in the course. But this actually has the form um, c1y1 plus c2y2. And so we can see here that we know what y1 is and then we also know what y2 is. So here we have y1, we have y2, we have g of t because it's given to us in the problem. And then we can just lastly find the Wronskian. And if you remember, the Wronskian is just the, uh, the determinant of this little matrix here where we have y1, y2, and then y1 prime and y2 prime. So if we have y1 and y2, we can pretty easily find out what their derivatives are. We plug it into a little two by two matrix and we take the determinant and now we also have something for w. And all we have to do is plug all of these into this expression and just crunch away and solve for the particular solution, yp of t. Now this will work for a lot more cases than the undetermined coefficients method, which was the previous one that we were talking about. Um, but I think what I'm going to do in the next couple of videos is just solve the same examples that we were doing in undetermined coefficients. Um, just so you can compare and see the differences in the two methods uh, for the, with the exact same problems. I think that's helpful. But just remember that this method, the variation of parameters, is applicable to a much wider set of, of possibilities that we can solve um, for the form of g of t. But you'll see when I go over the next couple examples that sometimes just integrating here just is like a beast. And um, if you're able to use another method, for example, undetermined coefficients. Sometimes uh, with certain situations it's easier, um, but you're not always able to. So it's good to know how this works and join me in the next couple of videos. And we're going to go over some examples um, and we're going to get pretty deep into integrating by parts, which I know you all love.